I'm going to be talking today about a project um, that engaged middle and high school students in producing videos around climate change in Colorado. And here you see um, an image of beautiful Colorado, the Front Range Boulder in the middle here, where um, you can really see the attractive physio uh, graphic setting of Colorado and um, also that you know, at this interface of plains to the high mountains, there's a lot of climate impacts can be felt very directly by uh, people that live in the state. Because it's such a phenomenal um, geophysical um, laboratory, there's a lot of research institutions and uh, universities al nested along the Front Range Corridor, and in these communities, students get a lot of exposure to science, to technology, um, and have access to university campuses and things like that. Um, however, you know, like many states across the country, um, there are, Colorado is a large state with a lot of rural areas and the c impacts of climate change can really be felt across the state and these are just a few examples that drought, wildfire, pine bark beetle infestation and things like that um, are, can be felt everywhere in the state and that connection of, we've heard this before, that if somebody can feel the climate, the impact on their actual community, that that's a very powerful hook to getting students engaged in science and technology. And that was this project where we had students feature in videos that they produce um, their, um, their view on climate impacts. Something that we call the Colorado paradox is that, yes, we have all these fantastic research institutions um, and the demand of STEM uh, graduates is um, is enormous, but we are not producing these graduates. You can see here supply and demand of um, graduates is, is not met uh, in the state. And then we have very sad other uh, fame that we are like the 47th out of 50 states in achievement gap between racial, um, uh, between white and uh, diverse audiences. And with this project, we really tried to have students, we try to address this having maybe more students across the state get interested and engaged in science and technology. So why do we think that works? You know, that students, um, having students produce videos about climate change would get them engaged. There is a body of evidence in the literature that something student-centered, shifting from instructor-centered to student-centered learning and active learning that's really powerful. The creative process of having students develop their own video, they take ownership, they work in teamwork, have professional interactions, they have to interview a scientist, you know, even though most of them have never met a scientist before, they have to manage their time, they have to really start it and go till the very end when a very important um, skill in life. They, along the way, get media literacy, content knowledge, and very importantly, um, this approach really appeals to a wide range of learners. So it's not the traditionally academically interested, but a, a very wide range of learners um, is interested in that. So here's a, a timeline of our about six month project. It was a pilot project. We recruited students from eight diversity serving um, schools in Colorado. And then we matched them with mentors. And the, our mentors were um, graduate students of the science department from our institution. And we really built on this, um, on the process of near peer mentoring that you have a young scientist mentor students that are not in age very far away so they can really be a role model that's very approachable. We had about 11 teachers and um, 39 undergraduates involved in our program. We trained these mentors to, in their role, just to really make sure they also get something out of it. And then the mentors work with the students on defining their topics, scripting their video, um, then going out and filming, interviewing scientists. And then with the editing process, they all neared the final product and we had a final screening on campus where we brought all the students on campus and that turned out to be a very important aspect of our project because these, a lot of these students had never been to a campus and they were so fascinated by seeing that it actually, you know, the students that walk around are not that far away in age and there were awards given. It was very, a very festive um, environment. 
And you can see here the range of topics that these groups chose from the 2013 flooding in Colorado. Obviously, this was happened last year, so that was very fresh in everyone's mind, but then also drought, uh, a melting glacier, snowpack, pine bark beetle, and things like that. Everything that the students really felt passionate about and could relate to. We wanted to really build this, put this project on solid evaluation and research uh, feed, and we had uh, we did pre-post tests on content knowledge and school engagement on all the students. We had the students all draw a scientist before and after um, the uh, program. We did in reflection, we interviewed the teachers, uh, we interviewed the mentors, and analyzed program artifacts. Um, out of all this research that we've done here, I'm just highlighting a few of the benefits, what uh, students reported and what came out of our data. Um, this local relevance, this place-based approach of something that they really truly care about, really developed a genuine interest. The students showed a genuine interest. They developed all, they really increased their content knowledge about the topic, but also about general climate change. And, you know, especially in rural Colorado, there's a lot of skepticism, um, but that really Im increased. All students took ownership over the project and something that was described by the teachers very um, prominently that the students really learned perseverance that they had to follow through to the, from the beginning to the end and that's a long time for a six month project that the students are kind of moving along at their own pace. They inc um, their interest in college increased. A lot of students actually did um, significantly increase their efforts to uh, be able to go to college, take science classes. That was something that the teacher stressed. And then along with uh, video skills, they also learned communicating and interviewing scientists. Something that um, I said earlier, we had diversity serving institutions um, in, from where these students came from, but the teachers told us that because they had different different types of students, diverse students, um, and uh, other students, these socially um, established group mixed over this project. They would sit over lunch together, and it was something they had not seen before. Once one teacher actually went to get his principal and said, can you see, look at what these students are doing over there. They're all sitting together. So that was really one of the official things. This is um, a reflection of a student, like it's a 92% black school from Denver. The student really pointed out in a reflection piece that she learned to be more confident through this project. She was thinking about dropping out, but the teacher really said, you know, you started this, you have to finish, and it will help you in your life. And she said, well, it was really great to see it through and finish this up, and I'm usually not a person that's confident in doing something and finishing it, but this was great. Um, here you can see some results from our draw scientist. These uh, female scientists, eighth graders, were mentored by a female graduate student. You can see here the pre uh, image of a scientist. It's like the old um, lab male person and you see the female scientist in the post-test. Um, benefits to the mentors, obviously this is very, um, was intended to be uh, student focused, but the mentors also really benefited in strengthening their communication skills, you know, scaling down their level of vocabulary to middle and high school students the uh, mentors were able to practice their mentoring skills. They were able to practice some broader impacts and get something on their resume. So the mentors were very happy. So you can see we always think in our group about the type of engagement. So the scientists that were just interviewed put a very low engagement level, but still they talked to the scientists and the grad student made a larger impact and invested more time. So what are our lessons learned? We we uh, learned that we really have to clearly find milestones to take away from this anxiety towards the end um, and have clear deadlines. Um, we need to provide a higher stipend uh, to the teachers and cut down on the commitment of the teachers that really facilitated this along the way. The mentors asked for more support. They would like to have a shadowing pr a project for future projects like this and regular check-ins. And we're going to have a jury select awardees before the final screening uh, in the future and not do this during the screening. And then survey administration is going to certainly be done by um, project personnel that is going to help us with our results. Um, to conclude here, the, um, 
We really feel this is a powerful, engaging instructional approach. It engages a wide range of learners. There's, um, it builds content, knowledge, and literacy skills. There's the place-based aspect is very important and can be transferred to you know, any other place in the states. The near-peer mentoring relationship was very mutually beneficial, not just good for the students, but also really good for the mentors. And this was funded on an $8,000 grant, um, so it can be done even with very minimal resources, like you can do that in a classroom. And um, yeah, and then I have a short little trailer. Can you guys just? Um, of just a clip, one minute, one minute. Uh, there's some. What do you know about the glacier? I don't. <laughs> what do you know about the glacier? Nothing. Did you know that it's melting super fast either every year? No. Did you know that it's right in Netherlands' backyard? Right in what? Netherlands' backyard. Oh, really? Yes. That's pretty cool. Did not. What do you know about the Arapaho Glacier? That it's nearby and that's it. No, it's right in Netherlands' backyard. I didn't. So that's a uh, Denver school now? When it drop, support your local waterman. Waterman X, the expert. How much water do we use in Colorado? People in the state of Colorado use somewhere between 140 to 250 gallons of water a day for their uses, like for cooking, for taking showers. It might be nice to enjoy your beautiful green lawn when it's green and pretty, but do we really need to overwater? All right, that was that, thank you. We have time for some questions. Uh, two questions. Uh, the first is, uh, I did something similar in an undergraduate classroom just as an experiment, and I found that my students' knowledge increased not only on the topic of their film, but about climate change kind of across the board. And I'm wondering if your results are similar or different, actually, to that. And the second question is, are these films available for viewing outside your project? They are. They are all on a website. If you Google series and LOCC, Lens on Climate Change, they are all available. Um, these videos are. And yes, the teachers uh, told us too that um, these students went home and talked to their parents about climate change. And there was like, because it's the broad climate topic, but it's impact focused. Like somebody said in an earlier morning session, it's nice to focus on the impact, but then you kind of, as soon as you talk more, you talk about climate change. So yes, that we saw that too. actually have a question as well. Um, when, how was the, the project presented to the students and when it was presented to the students, did they seem excited right away or did you have to get them kind of worked up for it? Um, so the students were very excited. Most teachers put it out there and they had to do, um, had to have the students apply for the project. They had to write essays why they want to be part of this and um, then they had like some selection criteria so it was very easy to get students engaged. It was a little bit harder to keep them moving but yes. 